Continuing on our trauma service, we have a 34-year-old male patient presented after a road traffic accident with uh, an abdomen is tense and tender with pain on the right upper quadrant. All right. So tense and tender abdomen, we need to worry about intra-abdominal bleeding. So this is why this patient needs to be managed according, as always, to A to E approach. And uh, basically, the main thing we're worried about here would be the C. However, A to E needs to be done. We need to make sure the airway is patent and also secure. And after doing this, uh, I mean, starting the patient oxygen, securing the airway, you can do some maneuvers such as head tilt to chin left. And then you can move on to breathing. And in terms of the breathing, you can examine the patient quickly, get a pulse examiner, examine the chest and do an inspection for the accessory muscles and then do palpation, auscultate the chest and the check for pneumothorax. And if there is pneumothorax, um, I mean, obviously you would check by pneumothorax, but percussion and auscultation and obviously looking at the trachea for any tracheal deviation uh, ruling out uh, some tension pneumothorax. If there is tension pneumothorax, we can do directly needle thoracotomy and plan the patient to have a chest tube inserted based on the outcomes. And also the circulation, we need to do a class of shock and draw the bleeding on the floor and four more, all right, external bleeding. And we know what is four more. That will be the chest, the abdomen, and also the pelvis and uh, the lower limb as well. After establishing this, you can do put a two white bore cannula Take bloods, including coagulation screen and grooving screen. And the cross-matching, commence IV fluid as a stat. And if you think the patient has significant hemorrhage, um, so activate the massive hemorrhage protocol. And following all of this, you can uh, do observation uh, or based on the news score and make sure that your patient is stable and always have a secure line N. You can do a GCS score. You can check the blood glucose. And even you can do the, uh, you know, the AFPU. And following this, you can do exposure with log rolling and feeding the back. And after that, you can take a quick ambil history and you're good to go. Looking at this chest x-ray, so here you can see some vascular markings, which are these white dots all over the right lung. But on the other lung, it's all black. And that would be a pneumothorax, okay? A pneumothorax. On the other side, I can't really see the trachea is deviated. So that looks like a poor quality a chest x-ray. But this is a pneumothorax. In terms of management, we, uh, if the patient is, has respiratory compromise, we can put an, a needle thoracotomy, and that will be in the second intercostal space medical avicular line. Or uh, later on, we can put a chest to drain in, and that will be the fifth intercostal space metaxillary line, and this is called the safety triangle. Type of shock and pneumothorax, and we explained earlier today uh, on the previous videos, uh, the types of shock, and we drew the heart in that fashion, if you remember that. Let me just do this like that. So we drew the heart. These are four chambers, just very uh, basic diagram. And uh, then we, we drew the aorta coming out like this from here. So you had the aorta coming out like this, and you had the um, pulmonary artery coming from the other side. You have here uh, the muscles, all right? You have the brain, and also you have the lower limbs, and you have the kidney as well. And on the other side, you have the lung to get oxygenated blood. And we explained uh, for the artery to be uh, doing its function, it needs to have adequate amount of fluid inside it and adequate tone from the outside. And then we explained uh, to have um, an adequate perfusion and to avoid having shock, so we need to have a working heart. So we can have here, we can talk about cardiogenic shock. And also we need to the outflow to be working. So if it's not working for whatever the reason is, it can be an obstructive shock. We need the artery to have a good tone from the outside and adequate amount. If we're talking about that would be a hypovolemic shock. And if we're taking tone, um, uh, that would be a distributive shock. So in terms of pneumothorax, if you have like the lung in here and causing some sort of obstruction of that tract, so that will be an obstructive shock. You can see a CT scan in here, and obviously this is uh, at the lumbar level. So as you can see, that's the aorta. And this is the, uh, sorry, this is the aorta. And this is the 
uh, one of the lumbar vertebrae could be lumbar one and then you have the liver here with adequate color on this side but suddenly there is a blackish color in here so this looks like a liver laceration okay liver laceration or liver tear so we've done a needle thoracotomy for this patient but blood pressure is still low so the patient is currently still in choke and tachycardic and pale and the CT above what's your next step so from what you can see here so the patient had combination of two shocks which we in Included area the obstructive shock due to the tension pneumothorax, and now we have hypovolemic shock. All right, or in other words, this is an hemorrhagic shock. So what we need to do, we need basically to activate the massive hemorrhage protocol and start resuscitating this patient immediately. Secure to wipe poor cannula, take all the needed bloods, including group and screen, and also activate the massive hemorrhage protocol. You can give the patient some tranexamic acid and fluids until the bloods are coming for the patient and speak with the general surgery team for taking this patient to theater. So very quickly here about the grades of the liver tear and you'll be like sort of, um, it's a little bit, may, might be a little bit confusing, uh, but let's make it a little bit easier uh, to remember. So as you can see here, grade one is less than 10%. So just to summarize, we're talking about two things basically. We're trying to assess how big is the hematoma and how big is the liver tear, all right? So in terms of the hematoma, we're going to talk by percentage. And in terms of the liver tear, we're talking by centimeters, okay? So if you have a hematoma less than 10%, that's a grade one. From 10% to 50%, that's a grade two. And more than 50%, that's a grade three, all right? And if you go up to 75%, that's a grade four. And more than 75%, that's a great five. So in terms of hematoma, as you can see here, so in terms of hematoma, we explained by 10% first, and then uh, less than 10%, and then from 10% to 50%, and then more than 50%, and then 75%, still less than 75%, and finally, more than 75% and you will find that these are five grades. Another thing, if we consider that this is the liver, we're going to draw hematomas now. So if you have a hematoma, about 10%, that's a grade one. If you start to make it a little bit bigger, from 10 to 50% of the liver, but this is a hematoma, so this is grade two, all right? If you make it even bigger, from 50% to 75% of the liver, that's a grade three. And if it's more than 70%, that's a great, I mean, four or five after that. So you have uh, less than 10%, and then from 10% to uh, 50%, and then from 50 to 75, and so on and so forth. Okay? So these are the grading according to the hematoma. But we'll have another grading according to the centimeters or the laceration. So if you have a laceration in the liver, it is less than one centimeter. So this is grade one. If it's from one centimeter to three centimeter, grade two. And if it is um, more than three centimeter, grade four. And if we're talking like it's a vascular evulsion or hepatic evulsion, basically, this is a grade four or five. Okay. So grading is quite important because this will decide if we're taking patient to surgery or we can do some sort of conservative management. So management of liver tear. So that would be conservative, and that would be giving the patient bloods, and also um, monitor the hemodynamic status. On the other side, we can do surgical management. That would be a damage control, repair, and also we can do resection part of the liver to stop this bleeding. With the CT investigation for this patient, the right decision. So you can see that looking at the CT, the patient has some sort of quite big hematoma. Before transfusing the patient to the CT scan, we need to make them, make sure that they are stable, all right? And by doing that, we can do a faster scan. And instead of a, 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 a CT scan, it can be as a bedside, and you can look at the important areas. So at least to get a faster scan first, and after your patient is stable, you've secured the line, you've transfused the patient, you can think of doing a CT scan to look more in detail. Areas to examine by free flow in the abdomen, 
that would be the perihepatic space, perisplenic space, the pericardium, and the pelvis. All right, and this is where we look by using the fast scan or the focused assessment sonography of trauma. All right. Well, so that was the liver tear very quickly. In addition to some quick talk on tension in the thorax and also how to treat it. Thank you very much.